What's up everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about metering. Metering with a handheld meter. And you can transfer this information to what your, if you use your camera's uh, ambient meter, what that's telling you too. Uh, and so my last video, I got a million messages from people saying that what I said was confusing or it appeared to be the opposite of what they thought was true and blah, blah, blah. And so I want to really cover all the bases today and clear up a lot of misconceptions about what a meter is telling you and what you should do with that information. So let's begin. We're going to cover spot metering and ambient metering today. Okay, so let's start with ambient metering. Ambient metering means you're measuring the amount of light falling on your subject. And, you know, light comes from all over the damn place. I'm standing in shade right now, but you can see right now there's these two sort of bright strips on the side because to the left and to the right of me there's the light source and then where I'm standing there's sort of this, this even shade and so if you point the meter this way or that way you get wildly different uh, measurements so theoretically you want this darker strip that you're seeing to be properly exposed right so your client's standing there in the shade you want to measure for their face so you point the meter you know, and I, I like to put the meter right under the chin. It's not so important in the shade because uh, uh, it's all sort of the same, but it's a good practice to measure from under their chin because a foot forward or a foot back or just tilting it this way or that way screws you up. So meter under the chin, measure, and you can see it's 2.4 at 180 at ISO 100, okay? So what is that telling you? The meter is measuring for gray. It's saying that if your subject is gray, that will expose it properly. So, how many people do you know that are 18% gray with their skin tone? I'm a pretty tan dude, and I, I, don't know, I guess I am pretty, pretty close. I mean, as far as uh, tones go, I am, I don't know. I, I would measure, I would still consider me gray as far as tones go. But this is 18% gray. So if your client has a complexion closer to my shirt, if the measurement is telling you that gray is going to be popular exposed and your person looks like this, what's going to happen when you take that picture? They're going to be overexposed, right? Because you're measuring for something dark, they're lighter, and, uh, and they're gonna be overexposed. Now, if they have a complexion way darker than gray and you don't change anything with that measurement, they're gonna become underexposed because they're darker than this. And that's what's so important that, you know, to understand about what a meter is telling you. It's measuring for gray. And so you can't just take the, the measurement blind and apply it to anybody. Uh, if you're photographing a pale person, you need to compensate with less light uh, or with somebody who's darker than, than gray, you need to compensate with more light. And that's how you uh, apply the information from the meter. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's switch to spot metering. Spot metering is measuring the amount of light that is bouncing off of your subject. And that's what an in-camera meter does. And so what we do is we just change bop right there to spot meter. And this is how much light is bouncing off of your subject. So again, if you're pointing this meter at somebody who looks like this and you get back a measurement, what the meter is now telling you is it's not the amount of light that's falling on the subject that's gray. It's telling you that whatever you're pointing at, the camera's gonna make that gray. Does that make sense? So it's gonna give you a reading or a, a suggestion that when you take that picture, it assumed that what you're pointing at was gray. So if you're pointing at something that's white and you uh, don't make any adjustments to your camera and your spot metering, your subject is gonna come out it's, I, I have to think about this right. It's going to come out underexposed because you need to add more light to make it white, right? If you're pointing at something that's black, 
or dark and the the subject the meter is pointing at it and it's going to be back it's going to be gray it's adding more light to make that black dark thing gray so you need to add less light to bring it back to black does that make sense so now it's spot metering is telling you whatever you're pointing at that thing is going to be gray so let's point it at this gray card so this is saying that that gray card is 125 at uh at f 2.4 okay so now theoretically if i if everything the universe adds up if i do an ambient reading in this same area that should match up so let's see if it says 125 at 2.4 and it does because both of these are exposing for gray god i'm ha happy that worked out that would have sucked if that didn't come out right so does that make sense this is telling you with an ambient reading that for something gray this is the proper measurement and you need to with your brain say well my subject is lighter or darker than gray and compensate otherwise with a spot meter is telling you that thing will come out gray with the readings that I told you. And with your brain, you just say, okay, well, my thing isn't gray. It's lighter or darker, and then I need to compensate the other way. It's the exact opposite. So I know it's a lot, but the whole purpose of learning this stuff and having it fresh in your mind is so you can know it on the tip of your, you know, the fresh on your mind and apply it in real time so you can use your energy for being creative and not bouncing a bunch of freaking numbers around in your head. So let's do a couple of experiments. Okay, so now let's just assume that you have absorbed all of that and you got it. If you're photographing something with an ambient meter and they're real pale, you know exactly what to do and vice versa with photographing somebody who's got real dark skin and they're, uh, and you got a spot meter, you know exactly what to do. It's right there, you're not confused anymore. Now let's move to the uh, second step. In direct sunlight, everything uh, reacts different. The, sh the shadows are different, the highlights are different than if something's backlit or if something's in shade. And so now once you have all that other information, now you need to make another compensation based on what type of light you're shooting in, okay? So if you're in direct sunlight like I am now, and you take a reading, it says 4,000 at uh, 2.4, okay? So when you're in direct sunlight, the thing that's most likely to get blown out is the highlights, right? Because you got a lot of light bouncing off of you. It's so much different from where I was just standing. And so I know people love to talk about overexposing the shit out of film because it can. But I photograph humans, and if you photograph humans, what you want to do is preserve their skin tone. That's the most important thing. And if something else has to suffer because uh, the skin tone uh, has to be exposed properly, then fuck it. That's what you got to do. You know, it's so much different than if you're photographing a bridge with like a dark shadow under it, and you need to preserve those shadows. That's not this situation. And so when you take me who I just talked about I was sort of grayish now I want to sort of maybe underexpose maybe by at least just half a stop more just to preserve that skin tone and and not get all blown out and, and pale looking uh, and the shirt will suffer for that you know and you might have to bring that back in but if I have the choice between a shirt being kind of blown out or the face being blown out I'm going to choose the shirt, okay? And so this is direct sunlight. And now if you're photographing somebody who's pale, son of a bitch, you really need to compensate by like another stop because you got a lot of light bouncing off them. So if in the shade you're going to, uh, to underexpose by a stop to bring this, them back to like a normal skin tone or to preserve those details, in direct sunlight, you need to underexpose by another stop, most likely, because you got a lot of light bouncing everywhere. Okay? Okay, so now I just rotated in the exact same location, but with the sun on my back. And look what's happened to the shirt, to my skin, 
to the shadows in the back, they're all much deeper, right? And so uh, it's almost the exact opposite of what the scene we were just in with direct sunlight, where all of a sudden things that were white and bright and reflecting are now real dull and have deep shadows. And so in this situation, you take a reading, it's 350 at 2.4. Okay, it's wildly, wildly less light uh, than just flipped around the other direction. So now, in order to preserve those uh, those skin tones, you're looking at my face, and wow, all of a sudden I'm a lot darker than I was flipped the other way. So now you need to consider overexposing by a certain degree to bring back the uh, the details, right? So. Again, you look at that sort of like that scale of one to ten. It's escaping my mind right now what that's called. Everybody else knows what it's called. Uh, and you say, okay, so if uh, somebody is is gray, and you want to preserve those details, you might want to overexpose by a stop. If somebody is real pale, you might want to just stay right where you are because it sort of balances out. If somebody is real dark, and you all of a sudden you're backlighting them, you might have to overexpose by two stops to bring back those details, right? Because what was once dark is now real damn dark with uh, backlighting. And also the other details that's behind me and stuff. You don't want that all just to be dark back there. You want to preserve those details, right? So just uh, going from front lit to back lit, we're now doing the exact opposite with our compensation, right? We're going from underexposing to overexposing now. To, and it's all to preserve these details. Okay, so now here we are back in the shade, and now you see that going from being front lit in the sun, where everything in the background was sort of like bright and uh, the shadows weren't real deep, to being backlit where the shadows were real deep and there's a lot of contrast between uh, what's in front and what's back, now we're in the shade area where everything's all sort of the same, and so you don't have to uh, overexpose the shit out of the photo uh, to retain the, the details because all the details are sort of just there, right? It's all the same under here. And so you don't need to make wild compensations anymore. That's why I prefer to shoot in the shade. And, and you know, a lot of people talk, oh, you can't shoot at noon. Uh, it's, that's the most impossible time of day to shoot. Yes, you can. Go in some place where it's shady. That's like where the best time of day is, is at noon. Because you have this really nice, like lots of light on either side of you and you can turn somebody left or right and really shape how that light looks. But the point is, is that when you're in shade, you don't need to make such wild compensations anymore. You can go pretty much off of what your meter's saying uh, and then just do slight adjustments for skin tone up and down because it's all the same now. And you don't need to do two stops over, one stop over, or one stop under, or two stops under because it's all just sort of flat and even under here. And so I'll, I'll throw in some examples of all these different lighting styles uh, after this, just to show you uh, uh, the difference between all three. Anyways, I know this was a lot. I know this is one of the most difficult uh, concepts for myself and most other people to grasp when uh, they're getting started. It's so many numbers and so many things that are the opposite and don't make sense. But I promise you, once you get it, it makes shooting so much more fun because you're not swimming in these thoughts in the moment where you should be concentrating on making somebody feel really good or feel real confident in you. There's nothing that gets a better face out of somebody than exuding confidence and knowing all this information gives you that confidence. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will talk to you next time. Enjoy these photos.